Salutations everybody, it is Maddie here today with the latest in Bethesda controversy. At the center of this whirlwind of angry gamers is Bethesda Game Studios engine, the creation engine. Since the release of Fallout 76, a lot of folks have expressed their displeasure with this engine, highlighting a lot of graphical bugs, poor animations, and so on. What really sparked a lot of this was the Forbes article by Paul Tassi titled, Fallout 76 shows Bethesda's engine has gone from meme to liability. Now I thought this article write up was pretty fair because it does highlight some positive aspects of the engine, but he goes on to mention that pretty much we have games like Skyrim, which are revolutionary, but still had hilarious bugs. And now we look at Fallout 76 and he feels like it's kind of the engine that's just had a bunch of upgrades bolted onto it. And it's time to move the needle over and fully overhaul the engine and up Upgrade. The quote that's really caught a lot of people's attention though is from GameStar in reference to the creation engine for Fallout 76 we have changed a lot, Todd Howard says. The game uses a new renderer, a new lighting system, and a new system for the landscape generation. For Starfield, even more of it changes, which we know from the AIAS interview with Ted Price that there are going to be a lot of animation changes. And for the Elder Scrolls 6 out there on the horizon, even more. We like our editor. Now do remember editor. That's something we're going to go back to later on. It allows us to create worlds really fast and the modders know it really well. There are some elementary ways we create create our games and that will continue because that lets us be efficient and we think it works best. Now before we get into even more details on this situation here, I just want to get my thoughts on that brief Todd Howard quote. While he does highlight some changes with the tech, I noticed a big focus on timelines, hitting deadlines, and that there is a schedule in place for Bethesda Game Studios that they likely don't want to delay to overhaul or recreate or move on to a brand new engine. Kotaku's Jason Schreier hopped into the mix with an article titled, The Controversy Over Bethesda's Game Engine is Misguided. Now, before anyone thinks that he is white knighting Bethesda Game Studios, fret not because he concludes his article by saying fans and pundits should absolutely criticize games like Fallout 76 for their ridiculous bugs and graphical failings. But today's controversy and the notion that next-gen games Starfield and Elder Scrolls 6 would use the same engine as today's games is misguided at best and plus Kotaku is blacklisted by Bethesda so he has no reason to really defend them. Now this article does mention some other write-ups and YouTubers. I'm not interested in getting into that business because that's just not how I run my channel. I just want to talk about the game so we're going to get into that because I feel this article does a good job of highlighting how an engine is made, the multiple pieces of it. I felt like I learned a lot from this article and I feel like you may too. So let's start off right in the middle. Blaming Bethesda's game engine is misguided however because the word engine engine itself is a misnomer. An engine isn't a single program or a piece of technology. It's a collection of software and tools that are constantly changing. To say that Starfield and Fallout 76 are using the same engine because they may share an editor, see remember I brought that up earlier, and other common traits is like saying Indian and Chinese meals are identical because they both feature chicken and rice. What we see on the outside, like a game's graphical style, its animation system, and its physics can be changed in all sorts of ways without switching to a new engine. To understand why this trend is so silly, let's run a quick refresher on what a video game engine actually is. Say you've just made Super Plumber Adventure, sold a couple of copies, and now you want to make a sequel, which you know will share many of the same traits. You still want your plumber to run from left to right, you want mushrooms to make him bigger, and you still want coins to disappear when he collects them. Rather than writing new code and creating new animations for all these things, you might take what you built for the first game and reuse it, bundling all those features together as a physics system. Them. Combine those physics with some other systems like a level editor and a memory management tool and you've got an engine, a collection of software that you can use from game to game in order to avoid redundant work. Super Plumber Adventure 2 will hopefully take a lot less time now that you've already got so much of it done. When we use terms like Unreal or Frostbite, that's what we're talking about, a framework for making games. These are not immutable creations. And in fact, a game's programmers will alter an engine's features constantly based on what suits their needs. Often fans will associate certain engines with specific graphical styles, but that can be very misleading because two games can run on the same engine and have very different art directions. Both the retro-styled Octopath Traveler and realistic-looking Days Gone use Unreal Engine 4, both the sports series FIFA and the upcoming Share World Shooter Anthem use Frostbite. Oftentimes, aspects of an engine will be in development alongside the game. In other words, Bethesda's engine in 2018 looks drastically different than it did in 2013. By the time Elder Scrolls 6 comes out around 
around 2024, it will look like something else entirely. The editor might be similar, as Todd Howard implies in that quote, but that's just one component of the engine that has been changing for years and years. This is not uncommon, by the way, as one game developer pointed out to me this morning, even the ubiquitous Unreal Engine 4 is still built on a foundation that started with the first Unreal, which came out in 1998. When I broke the news in June that Fallout 76 was an online survival game, one person familiar with its development told me that Bethesda's engineers had spent years adding multiplayer capabilities to the engine, which was a challenging and complicated endeavor that required rewriting a whole lot of code. On the outside, Fallout 76 may look similar to Fallout 4, but peeking into its guts would tell a different story. To say they are using the same engine might be technically accurate, but it's misleading. Now, I don't want to speak for everybody because perhaps there are folks out there way more knowledgeable about game engines and development than I am, but I found this article in particular very enlightening on what a engine actually consists of because I'm guilty of thinking it was one whole thing to find out it's multiple pieces and that, for example, the editor can remain the same, but various parts of the engine can upgrade as time goes on makes a whole world of difference. With that said though, I do think Bethesda does need to start moving their technology in general forward. It's clear that in comparison to other AAA games that there are some things happening under the hood that are bogging titles down. I'm not a huge bug guy, so when I see one, I usually laugh and I don't care, but I'm talking about stuff like texture pop in, draw distance, some of the animation work, which hopefully will be addressed come Starfield, those are the type of things that I want to see move forward with the next entry from a Bethesda Game Studios title. I'm expecting big things personally from Starfield. It's a new IP and I think Bethesda will be revitalized with it, but time shall tell. I just wanted to share this additional information on the latest in this Bethesda controversy. And I think the part of the article talking about Fallout 76 and 4 looking very similar, but on the inside being completely different is very telling because we have heard in various interviews that Bethesda Game Studios Austin was very much at the core of working very hard to overhaul the creation engine to handle online play, which is something that they had initially thought was completely impossible. So while I completely agree with everyone out there that Bethesda Game Studios does need to move some things forward, I think it's a pretty big achievement for them personally within their own confines which is I think how they view their game to game improvements they don't look at other games they look at their own and see does this one look better than the one that we previously released but it's kind of crazy when you think about it to have a game that looks like Fallout 4 and I'm not saying it like it's a graphical showcase but to look like a true BGS game and still feature multiple players it's interesting at the very least anyway the point of this video was less to give my thoughts on the controversy and more so just to give some additional information on game development, engines, and kind of round the whole thing up for those of you who may be late on this whole thing. Anyway, I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments down below. Do fire away, ladies and gentlemen. Other than that, be sure to follow me on Twitter, like me on Facebook. Those links are in the description down below, along with my Patreon. Do consider supporting that as it fuels all the content I create here. Stay sexy, stay active. I love you all. Peace.